AEW Wrestle Dream is this Sunday, and it's a very stacked card, so naturally, we gotta talk about it. And I know, before we hop into the predictions, you guys all wanna know the burning question, do I think Edge is all elite? And listen, personally, I have been gaslighting myself into believing that I have not been hearing any hype about Edge going to AEW, so that way, if it does happen, I'm shocked. Like, you know, when you miss that episode of Monday Night Raw and you go on Twitter and then the show is spoiled for you, but you don't have a chance to watch it until later that day. So you end up pretending that you never saw the spoilers. Yeah, that's basically me with this whole Edge news right now. I am legit gaslighting myself into believing that I never heard this. Despite me talking about it right this second. <laughs> on a real note, though, do I think he's going to be there? I'm going to say yes. From the rumors I've been hearing about him being removed from the WWE internal roster and him being very coy about what is that, I think he's going. I don't think it's a long-term thing. I mean, Edge is turning 50 this year and already put three years into WWE. So if Edge is coming in, it's not full-time. He's going to be a main attraction and I doubt it's going to be any longer than like a year. Now, how does he debut? We'll talk about that a bit later. A couple more things. I am partnering with Fight TV to run a giveaway for AEW Wrestle Dream. So if you're an international viewer of my channel, whether it be the UK, Canada, Ireland, Australia, whatever the case may be, if you're an international viewer and you want to potentially watch this show for free, go to the community tab on my YouTube channel and see what it's all about. Speaking of YouTube, I'm going to be live on YouTube for AEW Wrestle Dream on Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, so make sure you pull up. And lastly, my giveaway is sponsored by Wrestle Travel, a community and Patreon page founded by me, for wrestling fans that love traveling to live shows. There's going to be interviews with wrestlers, giveaways, just a bunch of cool shit that I can't wait to tell you guys about. We're going to be talking about it more on the live stream. All right, now let's get into predictions. Originally a tag team match, now turned two on one. We have MJF defending the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships against The Righteous. Given the current storyline, I think it would have made more sense for MJF and Adam Cole at the time to face, you know, the kingdom given that they're basically having a feud right now with Adam Cole and MJF. By the way, Roderick Strong is one of the best things about AEW right now, not named Tony Storm. I feel like this was a given, but I guess they're holding off on it until full gear. Adam Cole getting injured sucks because now the match is a handicap. Another thing that sucks is that this is another pay-per-view that MJF is not defending the AEW World Championship. I get Roman Reigns was doing it and we were cool with it then, but <laughs> can we not have both major world champions not defending their titles? I prefer this guy stay a defending champion. If he's not going to be defending the AEW World Championship on pay-per-views, then the Righteous should be winning this match. Because essentially what's happening is the World Championship is falling to the background of the storyline between Adam Cole and MJF, which should not be the case. I get that's your top storyline, but you're also the World Champion. That takes precedence over the Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. Mind you, I don't even think I've seen MJF on a single episode of Ring of Honor television. Not that I watch, but I haven't heard anybody say anything about him appearing on TV either. Don't get it twisted. I am loving MJF as a baby face right now. I'm loving this, but there's a lot going on with this right now. I think we need to figure out what we're doing with this right now because that's that's starting to... Mm. Who wins the match? After saying all that, <laughs> it's going to be MJF. If MJF is dropping the titles, it should be to the kingdom because that makes the most sense. Could MJF have a mystery tag team partner? Absolutely honestly lessen the blow of the righteous losing a two-on-one lead but i think the result stays the same either way mjf retains we have the young bucks versus the guns versus orange cassidy and hook versus the lucha brothers for a shot at the AEW world tag team championships let's play process of elimination shall we given the circumstances of phoenix now being an international champion i don't think it makes too much sense for the lucha bros to win so they're out the Young Bucks just had a match against FTR at All In. I don't really think that should be happening again, so they're out. This brings us to Orange Hook and the Guns. I honestly would like to see Orange Cassidy and Hook win, but something is also telling me at full gear we might be seeing like the entirety of Bullet Club Gold going after Gold, like Jay White versus MJF and Juice versus the international champion. Fantasy booking on my end completely, possibly. But I'm going to stick to my guns. See what I did there? And say the Gun Club wins this match. I ain't crazy about the Guns versus FTR again, but they have gotten better since then. So, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Chris Statlander versus Julia Hart for the TBS Championship. This is a very tough one. Julia Hart has been killing it recently. 
I think Chris Statlander is a pretty strong champion. But honestly, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. However, I'm going to go with Julia Hart winning this match. Chris Statlander's been champion for five months. I think she'll be fine. Julia Hart has the momentum. I would keep that going and have her win the championship. Also, she has a fresh gimmick and it's something new for the women's division. So I'm definitely willing to give that championship run a chance. I got my money on Julia. Eddie Kingston's defending the Ring of Honor World and NJPW Strong Openweight Championship against Ring of Honor Pure Champion Katsuri Shibata. If Eddie's got to defend two titles, why isn't Shibata defending his title? I mean, that would make sense to me. If I got to defend two, you got to at least defend one. I'm not against triple champion Shibata, but I don't know. This just seems like a weird situation. If I was Eddie, I'd be livid. But anyway, my predictions for this match, Eddie wins. Should be really stiff, should be really good, but Shibata winning, like Eddie just won it, like let him have it for a bit. Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Kota Bushi versus Sammy Guevara, Will Ospreay, and Kanosuke Takeshita. This match is going to kick so much ass, all the talent involved are great. Six man tag that was had at AEW All In was really damn good, so I expect this to be nothing short of that. One tiny note that I'm going to say is that Ibushi, that's my all time favorite Japanese wrestler, alright? He's my Japanese goat, and I will rep him until the day I die. I don't know if it's that he's been out of the ring for so long, or if he's still hurt. His run is not hitting at, like, at all. I'm not trying to say he's garbage in the ring, because he's not. But he clearly has lost like a step and a half. And he is also clearly being carried throughout these matches. It's upsetting for me as a fan because I know he's capable of more. But so far, in the last two matches I've seen him in, he's been the weakest link. He's getting upstaged by everybody. It also could be that the rate that he's been working for the last 20 years is finally catching up to him. But maybe these trio's matches are the best way to protect him. I don't know. I just hope we see the Ibushi of old soon. Before he takes the time off to heal. Back to the match itself. I got the Don Callis family winning this match. Sammy just turned heel. If Will Ospreay signs with AEW, he can be a top guy, so he should not be losing. And Takesha is he's fucking great and can be a top guy as well if propositioned to do so. Basically, everybody on this side needs it more than everybody on this side. FTR versus Aussie Open for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Wish there was more build, but should be a great match. I feel like I can say that for a lot of matches on this card, but the point stands. I got FTR taking the cake. I don't got too much to say about it, but FTR retains. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Adam Page. The match with the most build on the entire show. I'm excited for this. Swerve is another guy that I feel like they can be positioning to be a top guy soon. And if that is the case and that's the road they want to take, then he should be beating Hangman Page on this show. So I got Swerve Strickland winning this one. Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. in a dream match. This has been a dream match of mine since Daniel Bryan left WWE back in 2021. So I am excited for this match. I just ask that ZSJ goes easy on Bryan Danielson's arm because he just recuperated from that. If you guys know ZSJ and you've seen his matches, then you know how intricate and nasty he can get with his submission holds. So it's going to be really enticing to see Bryan Danielson combat that because he himself is a submission artist. It, it, Y'all won't know until this match happens how glorious it's going to be. For the people who always say, oh, there's too many spots in AEW. Oh, like, you, this is the match for you. For the Puro nerds, this is for you. For the submission freaks, this is for you. I got Brian Danielson winning this match. This is likely a one-off for ZSJ, so he doesn't need the win. Brian Danielson with the W. But there is one more match that I predict will be the main event. And that match is Christian Cage versus Darby Allin in a two out of three falls match for the TNT Championship. The first time the TNT Championship main events a pay-per-view. Huge deal. I think Darby gets the first fall. Christian gets the second fall. Darby Allin and Christian go neck to neck. And Christian Cage just ekes out to win to retain the championship. After the match, Christian Cage and Luchasaurus are beating down Darby Allin. Maybe you can get Nick Wayne into the fray too. Cage and Luchasaurus get the best of both of them. He grabs a chair, goes for the concerto. And that's when we hear, you think you know me. But I died on this day. Fantasy booking. Fantasy booking, I know. This could possibly not happen at all. But Tony Khan is talking about this new era at Wrestle Dream. And the rumors are out already. I mean, like, why can't I fantasy book, right? Obviously, he can't take the name Edge with him. And he also will likely not take Metalingus with him either. Which will be depressing as all hell. And as long as you think you know me in some ways incorporated into his theme song, I'm here. 
If he don't show up, I'm not too disappointed. It is what it is. If he does show up, I'm going to act a fool. Once again, live on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time this Sunday. See you all there.